Well, hello, my friend, and welcome to day 34 of our Bible reading plan. We are doing the journey, reading through the Bible in one year together, and I hope you're enjoying the journey. If you've just jumped on board, welcome aboard. I hope that you enjoy the readings for today as well. Super excited to share some of the thoughts and reflections that I had on the readings. And the first one comes from this passage in Matthew where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these religious people um, are trying to come to Jesus to trip him up, to confuse him, to ask him a really tough, difficult question that they're going to be able to go, see, gotcha, he's not really that holy, he's not really that wise. And so they're trying to throw whatever questions they possibly can at him, not for the purpose of putting those um, answers into practice and righteous living and holy living, but just for the purpose of tripping him up and asking arguing and, um, and saying that they're smarter than him. And so Jesus, in response to them, when they say, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He says in response to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the law and the prophets. So here are the Pharisees, the Sadducees, these religious people coming to Jesus and they're throwing out the craziest questions they can. They used to do this back in the day. They would really meditate on the laws and make them as difficult to understand as they possibly could, um, devising all of their interpretations and making people really dependent on them as the experts of the law. So people would become dependent on these people to interpret the word of God and the law of God for them. And so they prided themselves in their knowledge. They prided themselves in their wisdom and their ability to interpret the scriptures. So they try and make it as complicated as possible for people. Obviously, they've lost the heart of the word, which is to try and help people to live a righteous life. And so Jesus comes along and they try to trip Jesus up with this stupid question that doesn't even matter. You know, this person's married to this person and then they remarry this person after the husband dies and then someone else dies and then they remarry this person. Who will they be married to in heaven? And he's like, it doesn't even matter. Like, why are you even asking that question? Like, it doesn't even matter, but they're just trying to be smarter than him. And we see Jesus in response, he actually, with all the wisdom in the world, with all the knowledge, with all the insight, being God himself, um, doesn't make the scripture more complicated for people. He doesn't make it less accessible for people. He doesn't try and say, everybody just needs to depend on me and I will teach you. And even though he was the greatest teacher and he is the greatest rabbi, he actually simplified it for the people. He actually made it as simple as he could so that people could live according to the ways of God. And so in response to these Pharisees and people um, of the law who are trying to make it super complicated and to have power and leadership over the people, Jesus as a servant is coming and saying, hey, let me simplify it for you to use this to help you and transform your life. And so I love that, especially as someone who teaches the word of God and someone who preaches and shares the word of God as a minister. I loved the way that Jesus made the word of God as accessible to people as possible. It wasn't about trying to show off his knowledge and his wisdom. It was using that knowledge and wisdom, using what he had to simplify it in a way that made it accessible to people. So if we're ministers here or we're leaders or you know you run a life group or something in your church, I would encourage us to be people who don't just have arguments about the word and theology for for argument's sake, but actually talk through the word, discuss the word together to make it as accessible, practical, and applicable to people's lives as we possibly can. The goal is to help people live in the word and the ways of God and see transformation come through living the word of God. So I love that in Matthew today. Also loved um, this thought um, where Job obviously is going through in incredible suffering, um, and he's talking about the way that he lived. He's talking about the life that he had. And it's just such an inspiring life that he lived. The way that he lived, looking after the poor and the needy and orphans and all of this sort of stuff. It's just an incredible life that he lived. And then he says this in verse uh, 26 of, verse, of, 
chapter 30 but when i hoped for good evil came and when i waited for light darkness came so job was living this life everything seemed to be going well he was a righteous man and everything was awesome until one day it wasn't until one day everything came crashing down and he said you know since that day he's hoped for evil it hoped for good and only evil has come he's waited for the light but only darkness has come and i don't know if you've ever found yourself in a place like that where you've been hoping for good and you've been hoping for light but it seems like only evil only bad and only darkness keeps coming um, everything seemed to be going well until one day it wasn't and everything started coming crashing down maybe you feel like you've been walking through an intense season of suffering we see that Job's hope, even though in these moments and these days of incredible suffering, Job's hope seemed to be met with evil. It seemed to be met with darkness. We know the end of the story. We know how this ends for Job. We know that God gives him back a hundredfold uh, everything that he had lost, that God makes everything right in the end. And we have this same hope as Christians, as people of God. We know that our hope does not disappoint. Point, the Bible tells us if we put our hope in God, if we put our hope in Jesus, we know that in the end, that hope will never disappoint. That hope cannot disappoint. That hope in God will not disappoint us because God is the one who honors his word. And so as we put into practice those same things as Job, as we walk in righteousness, as we walk out uh, that position of Christ that he's given us in our lives as righteous people um, through the, the purchase of his blood on the cross um, in our salvation redemption justification sanctification as we walk in the fullness of that we know that even if it seems like today our hopes are not met with the object of our hope with those things that we're hoping for we know that in the end our hope will be fulfilled in God if it's not okay today it is not the end in the end it will all be okay and so i would just love to pray for us today that maybe if we're walking through challenges we're walking through suffering maybe we've hoped and hoped and hoped and and it seems like that hope has just been disappointed just want to pray um, that god would remind us that the hope that he gives us does not disappoint if uh it's not okay today it is not the end in the end it will all be okay so god i just pray for my friend today i thank you holy spirit for the opportunity that we have to read through your word together god i thank you holy spirit spirit that you always speak to us through your word god i pray that you would speak to us today reveal your word to us today god i pray if like Job, we feel like uh, we've been hoping for things and we've been seeking for you and your plans and your purposes and it just seems like those things that we've hope been hoping for, those things that we've been believing for, just doesn't seem to be happening. It only seems to be met with more suffering and more pain and more heartache. God, I thank you that your hope, your word says that your hope, this hope we have in you does not disappoint, God. Thank you that the word also says that we know the hope that we have in you does not disappoint point because the Holy Spirit has poured out, shed abroad that love of God in our hearts, God. And I pray today that we would be reminded of your deep love for us, God. We would be reminded of the hope that we have in you, Lord God, that we can hold on to hope no matter what our circumstances and situations look like, God, because our hope will not disappoint. We just thank you, God, that you are sovereign over it all. We thank you, God, that in the end, everything will be worked out according to your plan and your purpose, God. We just thank you for that blessed hope that we have in you in jesus mighty name everybody said amen amen thank you so much for joining me my friend it has been a honor and a privilege to share the word with you today can't wait to hear your thoughts and reflections as well please drop a comment down below explain what you've got out of the, the readings and how god's been speaking to you as well and i can't wait to see you tomorrow for day 35 of our bible reading plan